So this is something amazing here. Right. So I want to sort of revisit some of these ayat in Surah uh, Isra in light of modern historical developments. And the reason is because this will really demonstrate the Quran's ability to accurately predict future events. And there's some students here that who got this part yesterday in the apologetics class. And by the way, this is not my personal tafsir. I'm not qualified to give tafsir. <laughs> you have to have mastered something 12, 13, even Jose al says like 15 sacred sciences in order to give your opinion about something in the Quran. So this is a tafsir of modern ulama in light of recent history. Right? Those who have traditional training in the various requisite disciplines. So the Quran's semantical polyvalence allows for multiple correct interpretations. In other words, the Quran's ability to communicate meaning at different levels. Okay. So Surah Al-Isra is also called Surah Bani Israel. So listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. We'll just look at the first eight verses and then verse 104 and then we'll be done inshallah. سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير Glory be to the one who took his servant on a night journey from the Nuaylo Mosque in Mecca to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem His precincts we did bless in order to show him some of our signs Indeed he is hearing and seeing وآتينا موسى الكتاب وجعلنا هدى لبني إسرائيل ألا تتخذوا من دون وكيلا we gave Moses a revelation and made it a guidance for the children of Israel, stating, do not take other than me as a disposer of your affairs. O progeny of those whom we carried in the ark. Indeed, he, Noah, was a grateful servant. And we decreed for the children of Israel in the revelation. So this could be the, the aforementioned kitab, the Torah, or some ulama say in the lower mahfud, in the preserved tablet. You will certainly cause great corruption in the earth twice, and you will become extremely arrogant, oppressive, while in a state of political power, right? So ulu means to be in power. In Fir'auna ala Fir'aud. Right? جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْأُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا قُلِ بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ فَجَاسُ خِيَالَ الْتِيَارِ وَكَانَ وَعْدًا لَسْكُولًا So the promise of the first of the two came to pass. Right? So like the end of the first ulur. We sent against you our servants of great might who ravaged your homes. That was a promise fulfilled. So the end here, وَكَانَ وَعَدًا نَفْرُولًا means this is in the past. This is done. This is something that happened in the past. There's no doubt about it. So the ulama mentioned here, so when Bani Israel came into power with David, 1000 BCE, when did they lose power? What, what was the end of their, their ulur? It was in 586 BC. The Babylonians attacked the southern kingdom of Judah, they killed the last Davidic king. They cut off David, basically. Everyone was brought into captivity in Babylon. And they entered the homes of the Israelites, just like the Quran says. And they pulled people out that were sort of the more sort of influential people. And they took them as prisoner into Babylon. Now, this verse, number six, sorry. This verse, according to several exegetes, the khitab changes here. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Muslims in the form of a prophecy. This is the, the future. Then we'll give you, O Muslims, the upper hand over them and aid you with wealth and offspring and make you greater in number. This is a prophecy. The Bani Israel will never greater the number than anybody. 
We will give you power over them, over Bani Israel. Jerusalem was conquered shortly after, during the Caliphate, during the Caliphate, Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anhu. And the Muslims, they conquered the Babylonian lands, the Persian lands, the Byzantine lands. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Muslims, in ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum. If you do well, then you do well for yourselves. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا But if you do wrong, it is your own loss. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُومُوا لِيَسُوءُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ لِيَسُوءُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ Then when the promise of the final of the two ulur will come to pass, this is the future, they, meaning the Jews, will disgrace you, humiliate you. وَلِيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدَةِ And they'll enter the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What is al masjid here? Well, what was the last mention of the mosque? The word masjid, what was the last mention? What's the referent? That's the rule. Subhanallah, the aswabi adi layla min masjid al-haram ila masjid al-aqsa. And they'll enter the Aqsa Mosque like they did during the first time, during their first uh, ruling, during the first ulur. Well, what you tell me, ma ala tatbira. And they, meaning the Jews, Bani Israel, will destroy with utter destruction. Perhaps, perhaps your Lord will have mercy on you. So here, Asa in Arabic is called Fi'l Taraji. Right? It's a fear, it's a verb of, of hope. Right? In other words, this will happen. Okay, God will have mercy on you, on the Muslims. But it's going to be after, after some tests. Right? In the same surah, Asa uh, Right? So so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to the Prophet, in the night make tahajjud, it's an addition for you. Perhaps your Lord will raise you to the praiseworthy station. And he has a maqam mahmoud. This is a, a cause of hope. But if you return to sin, we will return to punishment. You know, after the Qazwat or Hud. Some of them said, what? How did this happen? Who am in and Fusikum? It's a response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from yourselves. And we made hella confinement for the disbelievers. Strong warning to future generations. So like, think about this. How much have the Palestinians suffered? For the injustices committed by others. How much of the people of Gaza in particular suffered for the injustices committed by others? They inherited the consequences of the bad decisions of non-Muslims, of course, but also Muslims. Bad decisions, bad alliances, nationalism, Arab nationalism, Turkish nationalism, secularism, disunity, rebellion against the caliphate, making alliances with the Kofar, Young Turks Revolution, McMahon Hussein correspondence. But the victory will come. It's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not going to be easy. Perhaps your Lord will have mercy on you. But if you return to sin, we will return to our punishments. Now, towards the end of the surah, remember how we said these surahs, they have this kind of circular theme. Towards the end of the surah, we have this phrase again, Wa'atul Akhirah. And some of the ulama say, it's talking about the afterlife. But in light of what we know here, there's no reason to say that this is talking about the afterlife. And we said to the children of Israel after that, dwell in the earth, in diaspora. Right? And when the promise of the final of the two ulur will come to pass, we will bring you to the Holy Land as a mixed assembly. So the Jews from all over the world will flood into the Holy Land. This is the modern Zionist movement. This is the second Ulur. This is the major indication of their second facade in the earth. Then what will they do? According to the Quran, They will oppress the Muslims. And they will enter Masjid al-Aqsa. And they will absolutely destroy Palestine. And it seems that these sort of 
Well, anyway, we won't get to that one. Did this, like... So from, this is my finisher. So from our perspective, eventually the pseudo-Messiah, the Messiah the Jal, will emerge. Isa alayhi salam, the true Messiah, will re-emerge. Isa alayhi salam will defeat the pseudo-Messiah and punish the Ahid Kitab, you know, there in the Holy Land, but also guide many of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather them there as a Latifa, a mixed assembly. All of the Ashkenazi Jews, Sephardic Jews, Mizrahi Jews, gather them there as a mixed assembly for Isa salam to call them to Islam. And then eventually, every Jew and Christian will become Muslim before the death of Isa This is what the Quran says. وَإِمِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لِيُؤْمِنَ النَّبِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ and the pronoun here, according to most of the exegetes, is referring to Isa alayhi salam. And there is none of the people of the book that will believe in him before his death. Okay. So, very interesting. You see the Quran. It never ceases to be a relevant text. 